Breed prep season is upon us, and for the Breeders' Cup Classic horses, it's over. We've seen all we're going to see of the likely Classic starters come November 4th at Santa Anita Park. No better time than to dish on the prospective fields with the Paddock Prince himself. David Levich, David, uh, about to look at your top 10. We'll look at my top 20. And I didn't see anything this weekend uh, that makes me think we saw the Classic winner. No, Soda and Andy's a really good horse, but he always just kind of just finished second and third. He just happened to wire the field in California on an easy lead. Um, Zandon's a horse that always comes second. He might be a, he might he might be a great horse to throw underneath because he he seems to run a 104, 105 almost every single race. So he's definitely an underneath horse. I think you could look at it in the Breeders' Cup, but I don't think there was any like horses were like oh my goodness. But it is a wide open year, so it wouldn't shock me if Zandon won the Breeders. It just right. the way it is. It's just so wide open. But I thought those two horses were impressive. But I mean they're fifteen to twenty one, twenty to one probably in the classic. Yeah, I have uh, slowed down Andy a little higher and i um, trying to pull up my fair odds now and being very persnickety. There we go. Uh, oh, that's your top 10. What a spoiler. There's my fair odds. I have slowed down Andy a little lower. And the reason why, and I explained this in the article as well, uh, but there's other speed in here. Uh, it, oh, 100 percent. It's impossible uh, for me to see him being the one that gets a gate to wire win. Now, he, he has laid right off before so that's somewhat encouraging i don't know that he's going to be out, able to outkick horses like arabian knight or go rocket ride from the lead and then you have the obvious horses uh, that we know are going to be coming late white barrio arcangelo ushba tesoro uh normally i'm not gaga over the japanese but i think he absolutely fits in this group so i like the awesome again but unfortunately he caught a bad year to have that run style Yeah, the more I think about the classic, the more I'm starting I, about that. I'm sure we'll talk about it in a second. But the pace slides, the more I think about this classic, the more dangerous Arabian Night is getting to me. It just, I don't know. He's going to be second off, third off the classic, but I'm with you on the pace. I don't think a horse like Slowdown Andy will get the lead with Arabian Night and go rocket ride in there unless he draws a one or two posts and they're way to the outside or some weird happens. But the run up is so long, so I don't think that would affect anything. Yeah, I mean, we've just seen this movie before from Baffert with horses like Authentic and Medina Spirit. Uh, obviously, he was ultimately DQ'd, but uh, Baffert is able to, to ration that speed, and uh, they're the ones that keep going. Slow down, Andy. It's just hard for me to see him being one of the ones that keep going against this group. Uh, the one race you we have not mentioned yet was the Lucas Classic, the third of the three preps. I did put both Clapton and Trademark. Uh, on my top 20. And the reason being is that Lucas Classic with the super fast pace, I was on uh, one of the pace setters who faded to last. Uh, but, you know, that's the race they might see in the Classic. And they showed an ability to, to finish well. And uh, I thought it was, you know, it was a fun race to the end uh, with those top two. So because of their run styles and what they got out of the prep, I thought, you know, they, they would merit some con consideration at big prices. By no means do I think they're big contenders, uh, but if the connections decided to go, I wouldn't begrudge them that. Yeah, to talk about that race for itself, I thought Trademark ran a very, very good race. I'm not saying he's got a chance in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I know, see, what do you have him at? 96 to 1. You just didn't want to go for 100 to 1 or 90. You just yeah, wanted well, to play I, right I, I at 96. Add up to 100 points. Um, yeah, I, I thought Trademark ran a much better race involved in the pace. Clapton's a nice horse, but he was the he was just closing into a fast pace that seemed to really fall apart late. Rattle and roll didn't show up. American Revolution has been um, deceased, basically, on the racetrack. So I don't think that race was very strong outside of the fact that the big horses didn't show up. But I thought Trademark ran a really good race, but I think him and Clapton are more grade two, grade three type horses. Uh, hard, hard to disagree. Uh, now, you only did a top 10, so I actually agree with you that neither of the Lucas horses would be on there. Uh, and overall, I would say, uh, I mean, this far out, we're we're in agreement. I mean, obviously, we, we have a different top horse and, uh, you know, the, the, the ranking is slightly different. I guess slow down Andy would be the one you're a little higher than me, but, you know, kind of splitting hairs when talking about outside the top six of this group, I think. Uh, I guess the only one I'm quasi bullish on that you don't have at all is the Japanese horse who won the World Cup. But I mean, we're somewhat aligned here. 
Yeah, and honestly, I could have proxy and horses like Bright Future and Tooth. I could have them flipped. I just think it's so close between. I don't really have a, a strong opinion compared to proxy to compared to Bright Future or Go Rocket Ride compared to Arabian Night. I think Arabian Night's going to be very dangerous if he gets the lone lead. Obviously, target effort horses are. I think Archangel is a little better than all of them right now, but. Honestly, you can flip flop so many horses. I still don't know what I'm going to do with White Abario. It's going to be interesting to see who Irad rides because we mentioned Forte earlier, and this whole quarter crack thing and needing three works. This is just seems like, I mean, I don't really know what they're going for to try to make this horse make the Breeders' Cup Classic off another minor injury with only three works going into the race. So, I'm guessing Irad would go to White Abario, but the whole Forte thing bothers me too. I, I. Honestly, I don't even – I maybe could have put the Japanese horse there. I just don't see how he's going to win a race like this off a, off a layoff and only three works. Um, but I guess if he's in the race, Pletcher thinks he has a chance. I don't know if it's right. a Rapoli thing. But, yeah, I, I think you can flip-flop a lot of horses in the top probably four um, second to six. But I think Archangel at this point has the most upside of anybody in the race, and he's – I think he's going to be – I guess Whitebar will be the favorite. I think Archangel will be close, though. Oh, I think Archangel will be the favorite. And, he and might. Maybe, I think it depends if I read Maybe Arabian Night or – you know, it, it's, uh, it's a little a bit of a tangent. But, you know, to me it's so striking how the betting of these races has changed over the years. And if you remember the Cotillion, that really put it into focus for me. That – if this were 20 years ago, pretty mischievous is one to two in a race like the Cotillion. Three-time grade one winner, Oaks, Acorn, got didn't get put up, but you know, yeah. inherited the win. Nevertheless, had done nothing wrong, all the class you could want, and is two to one uh, because, you know, the figures and the pace and, you know, it's more sophisticated audience. But 20 years ago, I don't care how smart you are, the board – makes a horse like ceiling crusher or whatever her name is five to one and she was three to one in there and I, I think the same goes for even the classic with its huge pools is 20 years ago people are going to bet baffer and they're going to bet mandela home track etc and that's just not the case anymore i mean they're still going to take some of that money but in an era where the money is so sharp i think archangel is going to be the favorite I probably tend to agree with you for the simple fact he's by Arrowgate. He, the distance is not an issue. He's been a horse that they've really taken care of and not run him a ton, but he's he showed up every time he's run with a big effort, basically since he broke his mandate at Gulfstream. So, yeah, going back to your point on this smart money, there's just so much information these days and there's so much knowledge. There's so many workout reports. There's this and that. Everybody just has so much easy access to stuff. So. I definitely think there's more smart money now based on all the information everybody has. There's no more hidden things, I feel like, in this day and age. And the smart money knows where not to go. I mean, similarly, 20 years ago, a horse like Forte, or even when Uncle Mo uh, showed up in the Breeders' Cup, like the, the money followed a horse like that. And now I don't think it would show up. I mean, everyone knows the issues, the knowledge is there, and – you know, maybe he'll be he'll still be an underlay, probably, even if he shows up. And it's I mean, he's got to be 12 to one way he's been point, trained. Right? But I mean, now he's double digits, whereas, you know, a horse like that 20, 25 years ago, if he's in the race, he's six to one. So. Oh, yeah. And he's he's I, I just I don't know if you heard me. I think he's easily I shouldn't say easily, but I feel like he's 12 to one range minimum now based on all this. And if I for some reason goes to White Abario over him, he's going to be even he might be 15 to one, 20 to one. All right. Why? Well, I, uh, I told you we had a, a, a mailbag. I actually have two questions for you. Uh, one is on your top 10, though. Uh, someone who was privy to it before recording, so they, they wanted to make sure that uh, got your input on this. Pretty pointed question. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, you dear. need to explain why Proxy is number two. He has not won anything since the Monmouth Cup versus Nobody's. Yeah, he did. I will agree with that. The horse he beat. Yeah, I agree. I just think he's a horse that can get 10 furlongs and he's super consistent. Um, I don't know. I kind of said, I kind of answered that when we were talking about it. I think you can no, flip flop him and Bright Future, the horses coming out of the um, Jockey Gold Cup. I just like the way I like proxies. He's not a horse that he can be forward. He can be in the back. He's kind of, he's not really pace dependent. He's kind of a horse that can adjust to things, but. 
I wouldn't take a super short price on him. I kind of agree with your odds. If he's like 10 to 15 to one, I don't think he's a bad bet at all in this race to be in that wide open. And I'm guessing Joel will ride him. I don't know who else Joel will ride, but Joel knows him really well if he rides him. So yeah, I agree with whoever asked that question. I completely agree <laughs> with he, she, he really hasn't won a lot, but he's always, he always shows up for the most part outside of that Ellis park speed track race, which he just didn't show up. Yeah. At. He feels like he could be sort of a, a Fort Larned of this group. But I don't want to put a bunch of chalks on top this year. Like, I, don't, I just don't think this is the year that – I mean, they could run one, two, three. I just think the way this year is, it's so wide open that I think you got to take some chances. I mean, I would say the reason I'm absolutely thinking about chances is because based on what we've seen of the Euros and what they've done here this year, uh, it's going to be really hard to make a case for any domestic horse in the turf races. Uh, the euros are obviously going to be short prices, so you know to they're me, bringing good ones too, aren't they? I didn't even know Brian say he was bringing like any bringing legit good ones this year. I think he's bringing both August Rodan and Paddington, um, and one of the two for sure. Now I wouldn't be shocked if he tries. The What's classic. the two year old's name? Oh, the yeah, I, I don't know the two year old. The one yet. that won but, by yeah, like no, ten. I, I mean, the yeah. euros are going to what are there eight turf races? Was six turf races? I mean, they're going to win five easy. Yeah, in this year, like like you said, I mean, the only turf horse that would have a logistical chance, uh, logical chance, would be up to the mark. But he's running in a prep this weekend at Keeneland, and he hasn't been seen some, since Manhattan. So I don't know right. what to expect from him. But our turf divisions are just so weak. I, I will say though, the races I think we'll talk about it. The races at Aqueduct this on Wednesday are pretty interesting. There's some decent horses in the two year olds. I'm not saying they're going to beat the Euros, but there are some solid two year old turf horses. I think. No, and we have seen the the two year olds be the ones that sort of uh, at times can can definitely run with uh, the the best that Europe brings over, not necessarily the best in Europe. Uh, glad you did mention Wednesday though, a special card for Belmont at the Big A, uh, moving that Sunday card to Wednesday. Uh, you'll have a sheet for that, and then uh, Belmont at the Big A continues this week, and we fold in Keeneland and lots of two year old action Wednesday on the turf. And then this weekend at Keeneland and Belmont and Santa Anita, for that matter, the big grade ones for the juveniles. Yeah, this is the best time of racing, in my opinion, to have all the fall races leading up to the Breeders' Cup. I already saw the opening day card at Keeneland overnight. It's ex exceptional, as we always expect with their races. So hopefully the weather holds together in New York and Keeneland, um, Kentucky. I think it looks good, though, That's both great. ways. So there should be a – yeah, <laughs> which is rare to say in New York these days. No, oh, yeah, um, I meant Kentucky. Uh, the weather in Kentucky looks great. I hadn't looked at that, oh, yeah. but uh, package for Keeneland. Package for Keeneland for the meet. You can still do Aqueduct all the way through the year. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Keeneland. It's going to be – I think their fall meet is probably – I guess Saratoga is the number one technically, but I think Keeneland Fall Meet is right up there is with the best meets of the whole year, just based on leading up to the Breeders' Cup. Good weather, good horses, so looking forward to it. Agreed. Yeah, I think day-to-day, -day, I mean, obviously in the spring, you have the excitement with the Derby and Oaks and the, the trail, and that's well-defined. And then the summer with Saratoga and, and Del Mar, even though the handle didn't show up, I thought both uh, you know, the products were, I would say, maybe even better at Del Mar and Saratoga is Saratoga. But day to day, the fall racing, even I would say at Aqueduct uh, in November and then Churchill right after Keeneland, uh, day to day, race to race. Th this is the time of year. Completely agree. The November meet at Aqueduct, like you said, is really, really good. And then obviously the a um, lot of good two year old racing at Churchill and the November meet and Stephen Foster, Stephen Foster, and Clark. Clark yeah. um, yeah, Clark. Um, yeah, they have a lot of good racing as well. So I agree with you. From about here to Cigar Mile Day around that is just really good racing, and I'm looking forward to um, Keeneland this weekend and all the good racing at Aqueduct as well. Me too. Well, one last question for you. Uh-oh. What do you think about me wearing white after Labor Day? I think it's fine on a video, like, but I wouldn't wear one to like, I wouldn't wear like a white suit to Keeneland this weekend or something, <laughs> but like a, a, a white polo is fine to be honest. But right. the whole white after Labor Day thing, you can wear white polos after Labor okay. Day. You just can't wear white shoes and white pants. And I don't think you own white pants or white shoes, but I don't. Or like white dress shoes. But so yeah, you're good. All right. Well, got the seal of approval from the prince. He does fashion, he does picks. Belmont at the Big A. Now they run Thursday too, right? So it's Wednesday. Thursday. Yeah, they're a five day week. Yeah, you got a five day week, and you got the second coming of Uncle Mo running on Saturday and Fierceness, that horse that had that huge debut at um, Saratoga. Right. So yeah, they have 
you have the champagne and the frisette this weekend as well there. So, yeah, they have a five-day racing week in New York. Well, you said it best, best time of year, and uh, I agree. Keeneland opening weekend, the big two-year-old races, Breeders' Cup just four weeks away. Let's, uh, let's crush it. Good luck, everybody. All right, that's the Prince. I'm Ed. Good luck this weekend.